Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Oracle Modern Customer Experience 2017. Brought to you by Oracle. Okay, welcome back everyone. Live here in Las Vegas at the Mandalay Bay Convention Center. This is Silicon Angles, theCUBE. This is our flagship program. When we go out to the events, and extract the signal to noise. I'm John Furrier, the co-founder of SiliconANGLE, with Peter Burris, head of research at SiliconANGLE's wikibon.com team. Our next guest is Marta Federici, who's with Royal Phillips, who's head of CRM. So, CRM, customer relationship management, the old way to do things, now transitioning to modern customer experience. Welcome to theCUBE, you look fabulous. Thanks Thank for joining you. us. Thank you for inviting me. Um, Pleasure to be here. Great to have you on because you know, one of the things that we're really focused on with our research that Peter's doing is the practitioners, how they're mm. thinking about executing the customer experience yeah. and on, the, on our reporting side, we're seeing huge reports that these platforms are providing great value, but yeah. at the edge, the customer's ex expectations are higher than the value that the platforms are delivering. Yeah. We're seeing with fake news, we're seeing it all over the place. People want authentic experiences yeah. relevant to them. Yeah. This is the whole purpose. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's the people so, factor. That's what yeah. you're going to be on stage <laughs> next, tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., yeah, indeed. So, I would say, um, to be authentic, to be genuine toward your customers, you always need to be relevant to them, you need to listen, you need to learn, uh, you need to know what they need, you need to be ahead of uh, what can they possibly do, you need to study, you need to focus on the insights, um, you have to really connect all the dots. I think one of the biggest challenges that we have as a company, but I, I think can be a shared challenge with many other companies across the globe, is that sometimes you not always have the opportunity to, to break the silos within a large organization yeah. and work really horizontally. Yeah. And this is something that we, we really strive to do, especially when we have specific projects or innovation related projects, uh, innovation driven technology projects as well. So we try to build a multifunctional team that really can work hand in hand uh, together to deliver the higher ROI, the better results, the best customer engagement, and be always relevant um, when it's needed for our customers, for our consumers, and even for our patients, by the way. So let's talk about your team then, and how yeah. your team fits within Royal Phillips. Describe how you've constituted it, how you've put it together, yeah. uh, and how it connects into some of the other functions yes. necessary to drive customer experience. Yeah, so, by the way, um, I'm very proud of my team, I would say, as a start. Uh, we, I mean, I built this team in the past three years, um, and my team is composed in a, in a particular way. I have um, a, a, a portion of the team that is focusing on business to consumer CRM, a portion of the team on business to business CRM, and then I have, uh, I would say, two layers in between. One is about CRM technology that spans across both domains, and one is about insights. Um, I would say, all of them work together. And I really like the fact that also the business to consumer and the business to business team, they can enrich each other, sharing challenges and really learning from one another. Um, when I think about my, uh, I would say my product owner, um, actually we work very, very closely through his team with the IT department on one end, because also we own. This uh, is the technology Exactly, person. the technology side of the story, I would say, because we own, for example, the market automation tooling, uh, Eloqua, that we leverage for any digital campaign management activity on both B2C and B2B, um, as well as the identity system, et cetera. And on the other hand, through the inside team, um, we also um, work very, very much closely together with the enterprise information management teams. So any team who works with databases, with reporting, with advanced analytics and predictive analytics. So through them and through the, the, the more business side of my team, uh, we, we can build quite nice stories for so our customers. So you got a B2B practice, a B2C yeah. practice supported yeah. by technology, technology and analytics. and insight, exactly, exactly. Yeah, That's cool. the structure of the team. How did, it, yeah. how did you build the team? I mean, yeah. uh, talk a little bit, we talk about the customer journey and CRM and related technologies needing to intercept and serve customers as they seek their solutions and the value propositions that they want to build. Yeah. How did this play out at, at Phillips? How did it, uh, where did it start? How did it evolve over time? 
to get to where you are. And obviously at some point in time we're going to ask you, and where do you think it's going to go? But <laughs> how has it sure. gotten to where it is? Sure, I would say well, when I started, um, I had a, a white page, a blank page, a totally blank page. And I started hiring uh, some experts in key areas. Actually, the first expert I hired were on the technology side because we were supposed to, uh, to deploy Eloqua first for the first time on a global level. So that was the, the first uh, piece of the puzzle together with the insights team and also with um, some key expert in terms of B2C and B2B business domains. So then I started realizing, okay, but this structure needs to make some sense. Um, they need support, they need help. Um, we, we enable, uh, as, a, as a, I would say, CRM a corporate team, any countries across the globe and any businesses, B2C or B2B. Um, so we deal with a lot of stakeholders, with multiple stakeholders and we, we run and manage multiple projects at the same time. Um, so let's say I started then figuring out, okay, what are the talents that I need um, on a business perspective to really make sure that we design the right journeys, that we build the right campaigns, that we can interpret the data properly. So piece by piece, I started really um, filling out all the boxes um, that I had in my mind, and, and, and now I think this organization uh, is really working. So um, uh, the team is very motivated, very committed, very passionate, and, and in, the, in the past months, actually, also recently, we delivered quite some best practices. So, yeah, What's so the big award winning best practices. Yeah. Marta, talk about the learnings. Yeah. Um, you're on a transformation. Um, and CRM certainly is important as you, as you move and transform into the modern era of, of, of relationship management with customers. <laughs> what are the learnings that you have um, taken away that you could share with folks that are either on a, a different part of the journey path than you yeah. are, or just anything that you would like to share that yeah. would be helpful? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I think about also what, uh, what, what Laura Ibsen, uh, for example, talked about this morning, uh, the marketing heroes. I think uh, technology is now very- Now, Laura Ibsen is the head runs all this exactly. modern marketing Mo products. Exactly, the she's the head Oracle honcho. Marketing Cloud. She's yeah, the head yeah, honcho, yeah. as they say. SVP <laughs> of, of Oracle Marketing Cloud. So when, when, I, when I listened to her this morning, she was talking about this, those marketing heroes, also while talking to Time Warner uh, CMO. Um, and I think in order to, to to start and to succeed in any transformation, any digital transformation that you want to carry forward with, you really need the right talents, uh, with the right attitudes, with the right skills, uh, with the right mindset, by the way. And I think on one end, technology can really help you, can really uh, be a game changer, a key enabler, but without the right people on, on your company side and also on your vendor side, they work together with you on a daily basis you cannot achieve great results. And what about the partners? I mean, Oracle obviously has a good team. We've been following them now for multiple years. Um, eight, it's our eighth year covering Oracle. Um, we're yeah. seeing the transformation within Oracle, but also they have partners too. I mean, yes. uh, what, do, you, do you interface with them and what, what's your uh, advice for folks that are trying to sort their partnership component yeah. out with the vendor? Yeah, let's say one peculiarity of, of my team and what we do every day is that we work daily with Oracle and we also like to embrace any other partners that they uh, suggest us to work with. Um, for example, uh, in, a, in a recent campaign, we, we bid a, a huge Black Friday uh, best practice for our North America market and we also scale it globally, um, achieving great results, um, and we partnered up on one end with Oracle, strategic services, expert services, but also with Return Path, which is one of their also, um, I would say, uh, preferred partners. Um, to make of this campaign something really, really good and to ensure um, a, a very good uh, broadcasting performance. Um, on the other hand, we also um, partner with some of their um, additional partners that can be related to some apps specifically or uh, some talents that they have internally, uh, no matter if it's about consultancy, strategy, technical expert. So yeah, we, we're pretty much uh, open, uh, very open-minded and very, um, I would 
say we embrace uh, any inputs, any good inputs. Um, also because on one end, what is important for us is to share the challenge that we have with our vendors, with our partners, and uh, of course, asking for help. Uh, but at the same time, we like to onboard them, to, to, to make them understood about what's the real challenge, how do we feel about it. We need to have a common sense of purpose if you really want to, to I mean, to, to take a project to the next level and make it a success. So, so as you implement these tools and put these relationships in place, the productivity and the effectiveness of marketing goes up. Yeah. How is, therefore, the role of marketing starting to change within Philips yes. as a basis of these new competencies and these yeah. new capabilities yeah. that presumably the rest of the organization finds valuable? Let's say <clears throat> Philips has a, has a great mission, so we... And one that's transforming, has gone through a lot of change over the last exactly. few years. Pretty successfully, we Exactly, have. exactly. We are a health technology company. Uh, we employ 70,000 70, people across the globe, uh, across other countries. Um, our mission is to improve people's lives through meaningful innovation that matters to our consumers and to our customers. So I would say this is a, a huge challenge. We, we say that we, uh, we would like to improve uh, three billion people life by 2025. It's a, it's a huge mission, and how are we going to do that? Through innovation, through one-on-one -on -one customer relationships. Um, so, and, and this is where, I mean, uh, we also recently, we started focusing more and more on our customer. We started being truly obsessed, no matter if we talk about consumers uh, on B2C domain, or if we talk about customers. So customer obsession is really at the core of any of our marketing activity right now. And it will be even more. Uh, um, by the way, in the past six to nine months, we also had the opportunity to have CRM as well as our, I would say, shop capabilities becoming core marketing capabilities. Of course, this comes with a lot of pressure, a lot of, I would say, um, attention so also. Some sleepless nights. Exactly, exactly, but it's quite exciting. And we also, um, we also would like to continue to, to invest on our connected proposition. So we also build products which are connected to apps. Uh, and what's the best way to engage? CRM. So what's the best uh, tactics or strategy or how can we build a consistent, long-lasting engagement and that delivers the, the, high, the higher results and the higher, higher ROI. So that's, that, I mean, CRM can be really a game changer there. So Philips is quite legendary and perhaps because of its Dutch heritage, because Dutch, the Dutch yeah. had to engage yeah. a lot of people from a lot of different backgrounds and a lot of places to make their businesses great. And Philips yeah. is quite legendary yeah. at being uh, uh, responsive to and responsible, f responsive to and responsible to a lot of different people yeah. on a global basis. How are some of those cultural uh, uh, values mm -hmm. uh, being amplified inside Philips as you bring more of this customer obsession yeah. to bear? Yeah, so let's say Philips is at quarter in the Netherlands. And in the Netherlands, um, I would say Dutch people uh, are always ready to listen. Um, you mm -hmm. need to always find a sort of consensus before you can move forward with any strategy or with any project or program. Uh, you always listen also to, uh, to, to any inputs because you want to really make sure that your idea on one end is, is agreed and on the other hand is really analyzed into the least of the details. So, uh, what do we do is, um, is really try to understand um, all perspectives, because any point of view can enrich uh, an, an initial idea that you have. Um, and I would say our business is also so diverse. If you look at all the business units that we have, um, and we, uh, sometimes it can be difficult to understand Philips as a whole, but in the end, um, every single of our business units really cooperate together to the, the, the greater goal of uh, innovation that matters in improving people's lives. So you will find this um, through any of our stories, uh, any of the products that we deliver, that we build also together with our customers. So I would say Philips is, has many, but also can be also just one. At the yeah. same time. It's transforming as you know, GE says, you know, they went yeah. to bed at an industrial company one night and woke up 
a software analytics company. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's and really are, what's happening. Exactly, and you know what? We are also focusing on um, delivering services and delivering information. Um, because what we also strive to do is to work within the health continuum from prevention to diagnosis to care, also home care. A and this is what we are really um, um, aiming to do at this stage, also establishing a connection in between a consumer that can also be a patient on the other side in delivering the right information to the hospital uh, yeah. to take care of them. So in this health continuum story, it's really a game changer, I think, within, uh, I would say, an health tech yeah. industry. And having the data is critical. Marta, final question for you. Yeah. Take a minute <laughs> to share what's exciting here yeah. at this event. Why is the modern customer experience uh, show this year so important. There's a, a big yeah. buzz around this platform. There's a big buzz about the, the, the early days we're in with modern customer experience being thought differently with AI and seeing this yeah. beginning trajectory. What, what should people get excited about? What's the most important thing in your mind? I think the first thing I notice while, while coming here, okay, first of all, this year the event is a new vibe. I think this event is, is, is even more inspiring than the past edition that I have been to. Um, and I think the fact that they renamed also the events into modern customer experience instead of modern marketing events is really a, a signal that something is changing, also on Oracle's side. And this is what I, I, I noticed at the first sight. And in the end, when yesterday, during Mark Hart, um, I would say keynote, opening keynote, um, he mentioned the artificial intelligence, I was pretty, pleased to see this focus through their, I would say, app environment, where if you, if you looked at the, um, at the services that this app is going to be linked to, you, you won't see the, 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 the marketing cloud anymore. You see the CX. So yes. it's all about the CX in the end, and this is in the end. They're bringing the it core. together. Yeah, they're bringing well, it together. The technology so is the marketing Oracle cloud. Oracle is transforming the again. The outcome is the CX. Yeah. Exactly, so, and I think they are going to um, focus more and more on that. Also, I mean, technology-wise, it doesn't make sense to have silos anymore. Yeah, what does this mean for you? How does, when you see that, what's yeah. the impact to your world? I can be only happy, because we are always challenged to, to look at the CX, and to start with the CX, to produce an even more enhanced one. So, uh, if I look at the opportunity this can bring to us, I, I can only be very, very positive. Um, also, the focus on AI is, is truly important. Uh, the focus on data, also this morning, Laura Ibsen uh, was talking a lot about the importance of insight and data, and how this is going to be a game changer, and also, this morning with Mark Hart at breakfast, he mentioned data is the new currency. No way. We were also discussing a bit, okay, um, third party data, who are the biggest player? And he said, of course, Facebook and Google, <laughs> of course. <laughs> but still, the value that every company should build alone is owning his own data. Every company should really care to build a, a, an extremely good database to start with because anyone can have, a, can have access to third party data, but this is, can be just an easy escape, easy or fast. So you feel comfortable. data that's going to determine yeah, exactly. your differentiation. That is the game changer, Great. for sure. And, and you're excited by, the, by Mark Hurd's comments this morning at breakfast. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> he's been on theCUBE, I did a Which 50. means he's now excited too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, Mark, if you're watching, you know, we need you back on theCUBE, he's good. He yeah. gets the marketplace, he understands the pulse, but he's also a data-driven guy. Yeah, you know, Even though much. he's old school like us, but much, Marta, yeah. thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. Marta yeah. Federici, head me. of CRM, thank you so much for sharing your <laughs> you. perspective and insight and data with us. Thank you. Thank it's theCUBE, I'm John Furrier, Peter Burris. We'll be back with more from Oracle Modern Customer Experience after this short break.